Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. You're going to have to forgive me if my voice sounds a little gruff. I literally just walked in the door from um, uh, speaking at a school this morning, and so my voice is a little rough, so forgive me if I do. Uh, before I jump into answering these questions, I've got a favor I want to ask you guys. Um, many of you have heard me talk about Dr. Uh, Thomas Holtz, Jr., who is an incredible paleontologist who teaches in Maryland. Um, I started a, a um, page on Facebook uh, where I want to bring some recognition to Dr. Holtz in the hopes that somebody that finds a new species of Tyrannosaurus, since Dr. Holtz is an expert in uh, theropods and predatory dinosaurs, um, will put uh, up on the screen right here next to me, you'll see the... Um, Facebook address. If you're on Facebook, I would appreciate it if you would go to that page and, and like it so that, uh, again, if we can get enough numbers, I'm hoping that a paleontologist out there will look at it and think the next time we find a new species, name it after Dr. Holtz. Dr. Holtz has done a tremendous amount for the field of paleontology. He's an incredible spokesperson. And the thing that I like the most about him is that when he talks about paleontology to the general public, he speaks in a manner that makes it very easy to understand. Now, if you speak to him at the level of a paleontologist, then he, can, he certainly has all the knowledge in the world and can speak to you at that level, but it's very hard sometimes to find people that can communicate to the average fan of dinosaurs and for them to be able to understand. So... Uh, uh, Dr. Holtz really excels at that, but he's done so much for the field of paleontology that I myself think it's a, dishon it's a disservice that we don't have a dinosaur named after him, and I hope to bring some attention to that. So anyway, go to Facebook if you're on it, and please like the page, and more importantly, share that page with everybody you know who's a fan of dinosaurs because I think it's a worthy cause. All right, let's jump into it. First is Mohammed from Bangalore, Karnataka, India. He says, hello, DG, how are you? I have a question for you. Well, Muhammad, I'm doing great. I hope you guys are doing good as well, and I hope you had a good start to the new year. Many people say and believe that all dinosaurs are related to birds and crocodiles, but to me, spinosaurids do not look related to birds in any way, but tyrannosauruses don't look like they're related to crocodiles and only look related to birds. What's your opinion on this? And thanks for your time, Mr. Blessing. Okay, Mohammed, appreciate the mister, but again, no need to say that. You can call me George or DG. I appreciate the respect, though, that you show, but just to let you know and everybody know, I, you may call me George or whatever you want. All right, when we talk about dinosaurs being related to birds, I understand that's difficult sometimes because you look at a sauropod and you go, that thing ain't nothing like a bird. Well, theropod dinosaurs, the predatory dinosaurs, are actually very bird-like, but not on the outside as much as on the inside. We look at their skeletal design. It is the way their hips are shaped. It's the hollowness of their bones. It's the, um, it's the design of the skeleton that determines which family a group goes into. We look for specific things, obviously, when you're naming a species, for instance, if you find a dinosaur like Spinosaurus who has a big sail on his back and that big, huge thumb claw, well, Baryonyx doesn't have a spine on his back, but he's still in the family. Why? Because of the similarities between his body and that big thumb claw kind of puts him into that category. So don't look at the outside image of a predator. Look at the bones, and there is where you will see a relationship between birds and theropod dinosaurs. So I hope that answers your question. It's not what's on the outside that determines which family you belong to. It's what's on the inside. Because if it was only on the outside, then my younger brother would belong to the family of skunks. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, let's go on. Elizabeth from St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. Elizabeth, that's my mother's name. So, Mom, it's good to hear from you. Hi, DG. I'm so excited you're reading my questions, so thank you. Well, guess what, Elizabeth? I'm so excited that you wrote to me, so you're welcome. I was wondering, since dinosaurs evolved into birds, do you think birds could evolve into something similar to a dinosaur again? Thanks for making these videos. You're fantastic. Have a nice day, DG. Elizabeth, you're fantastic for saying that. That's very kind of you. This is a very, very interesting question. So basically, if birds evolve from dinosaurs, could a dinosaur or something like it re-evolve from birds? Absolutely it could. You know, there's a number of birds that, that are alive today that have some very, very dinosaurian features. One of them, I believe it's pronounced Siriyama or Sir Sirima. 
boy, I can never remember how to pronounce it. But um, you'll see on the screen next to me, it'll say the proper name and then go look it up. That bird is alive today and I promise you it has a foot like a raptor. It's got what looks like a killing claw. So there's a lot of birds that probably have very dinosaurian features that over time could very well reemerge. It is possible that uh, one day we may see a cassowary who may have teeth. That would be a vicious animal. So I think it's a brilliant question, and thank you for writing to me, Elizabeth. It's very kind of you. All right, Thomas from Seymour, Connecticut. Con I said Connecticut. Connecticut. Sorry about that, Thomas. <laughs> Hello, Dino G. I want to know something. Do you think Spinosaurus could hunt an adult Paralatitan? If not, could he at least be able to hunt Uranosaurus? Well, Paralatitan is a big meal for anybody. I don't think size matters as much to the theropods because Paralatitan is just too big and he's not going to mess with them. I kind of liken it to even though lions in Africa see an elephant walk by and they know, boy, that would be a big meal, they're not going to risk their life trying to take it, take it on because there's too many opportunities to be injured, or wounded, or killed. And so I don't think any, I don't think any theropod messed with fully grown, healthy adult sauropods, regardless of the species. Maybe the, maybe um, Giganotosaurus and, wait, was Giganotosaurus alive with, Amargosaurus, or was Amargosaurus with somebody else? I don't know. But Amargosaurus is not a gigantic sauropod, so he's an example of maybe a theropod taking on a full-grown um, sauropod. But if you guys disagree with me that watch this, please post your opinion. I read them all. I don't respond to all of them because I don't have time, but I promise you guys, I read what you guys write. So if you think I'm wrong, I'd like for you to tell me, then who would be the predator and who would be the sauropod that you think might, um, might be willing to, a sauropod or a theropod might be willing to take on? I would be interested to hearing your guys' opinion on that. Uh, so getting back to your other question then, could it at least hunt Oranosaurus? Well, you know, I've been criticized a number of times, and rightly so, when I say Spinosaurus is a fish eater, and I almost kind of am dismissive of him as if hunting fish was all that that thing could do. And a lot of you people wrote to me and said, man, that's not true, look at his size. And you know what, you're right. That thing is gigantic. And yes, he would have had the weaponry to be able to take on an animal like Uranosaurus, to be able to, if you knock that thing down, just the hand claws alone were enormous and that could have done some tremendous damage. I'm always talking about the length of, of Spinosaurus' snout and how it probably meant he's not really designed to be a big game hunter. But the more I think about that, um, you know, I think I was wrong in that opinion. I think Spinosaurus would have been much bigger, much more effective. So the answer, in my opinion, was yes, I do believe dinosaurs like Oranosaurus and probably any other dinosaur kept its distance from Spinosaurus because he's huge. All right, uh, boy, today is, uh, it's amazing. Almost every question is about theropods, which is great because to my point when I opened it up, Dr. Holtz is a, maybe they did this on purpose. This is kind of cool. Anyway, all right. Uh, but my point was Dr. Holtz being a specialist in theropods and my hoping that we can get a dinosaur named after him falls perfectly in line with this. All right, Billy from Oakland, California. Do you think Allosaurus could have evolved into alligators because of how similar they are? Well, Billy, um, the skeletal design of dinosaurs is pretty considerably different than that of crocodiles and other reptiles in that the legs are splayed out to the side of their body and they don't drag their tail. For an Allosaurus to um, have evolved into an alligator, I think that may be too much of a stretch because they're just too dissimilar. They have more things about them that are not similar, so it would probably take a tremendous uh, amount of evolving to get to what a crocodile is. I do, however, think that Allosauruses would have had a much greater chance of ultimately becoming birds because of their body design. So that would be my guess. This is an interesting question, Billy, but you know the, the difference is also you gotta think about this. Animals evolve for one reason, and that is to survive. And evolution is usually sparked by change within the environment, meaning that something changes and in order to survive, you've got to be able to adapt to that. And in some cases, adaptation, adaptation becomes evolution in that uh, if it rains all the time where you are and you don't, you don't move to some place that's better suited for you, then you've got to adapt to a wet environment. And that could sometimes mean things like 
webbing between the toes to allow you to swim, a more streamlined body to allow you to swim, having a lot of musculature in the tail to propel you through the water. Those are the kind of things that would have happened to Allosaurus uh, had he been able to turn into a crocodile. So that's why I believe he probably didn't. All right, finally, Ben from Modesto, California. Another California. Hi, I am your biggest fan and I have two questions. Well, that's very kind of you, Ben. Thank you so much. Uh, I have two questions I want to know. Did Spinosaurus and, boy, here's another theropod. This is cool. Did Spinosaurus and Allosaurus live in the same time period? And if so, who do you think has the greatest chance of winning if they fight? I'm asking this because Allosaurus can jump high enough to knock Spino on his fin, which could break his back. But Spino is just huge. Well, Ben, when you're, when you're comparing animals and how we think they would end up in a fight, obviously it's all um, uh, speculation, meaning nobody knows for certain. And so the thing to do is what you've done, and that is you look at them and you figure out what are the strengths and weaknesses of each. First of all, Spinosaurus and Allosaurus didn't live together at the same time. They never saw each other. They were separated by tens of millions of years, maybe hundreds of millions, right? Close to that, probably 50, 60 million years. So they probably never saw each other. But for the sake of your question, if they did live together, first Spinosaurus' size is considerably bigger than Allosaurus. So Allosaurus, if he was going to fight with something like a Spinosaurus, I would say he probably would have kept his distance. Now, if he was able to jump and knock the Spinosaurus down, remember, the fins on Spinosaurus's back were very tall and not that robust, and so they could very easily have broken, but it doesn't mean that it would break the back of Spinosaurus. There's a lot of people that often comment that if a big theropod were to fall down, he would never be able to get back up and he would die, which I completely disagree with because that makes no sense whatsoever. Even an elephant can fall down and get back up again. If your life depends on your ability to, to, or let me say it this way, if your life comes to an end because you fall down, then you wouldn't have survived five minutes and you never would, there wouldn't be more of you. you the species would be gone in the span of a week because anytime anything falls down, if it dies or if it instantly causes a broken back, well then that's not, uh, that's, not, that's not a way to be able to perpetuate the species. So even if Spinosaurus fell on his back and even if he broke his fin, that wouldn't end his life. It may certainly affect him, but it probably wouldn't kill him. Breaking your back takes a tremendous amount of energy and sometimes falling isn't always enough to break the back of a big animal. There has to be something else like falling and tumbling down a hill or falling a great distance off of the side of a hill or a rise or a cliff. Those are the ways that you can break your back. But just falling, it's not that likely. So I don't think these two animals ever saw each other. If they did, I think they would have kept their distance and I think Spinosaurus is too much. Even though I love Allosaurus, I think it would be too much for an Allosaurus. All right, you guys, if you have a question, go to my website. While you're there, check out the new catalog we just put online. The new catalog is loaded with stuff, really cool stuff. So if you would like to buy some claws and teeth and bones and skulls, go there, check it out, and I hope you get something. Um, Everybody out there, really appreciate the good manners and the courtesy. Make sure to use that when you're dealing with everybody. Take care of the people around you. If there's elderly people in your neighborhood who don't have any family, it surely wouldn't hurt for you to go check on them every now and then. Uh, shovel some snow off the front of their house, especially now that these storms are here. Keep an eye on everybody around you. And for you young people out there, practice your reading because reading is incredibly important. And for everybody, uh, Happy New Year again to you all. I'll try, if I can, to shoot a couple more of these very, very quickly. But until then, take care, and I'll see you guys soon.